Since my last video, I had another idea on a copper wire test. Let me show you what I did. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I have a copper wire bent into kind of a V shape. And I'm going to go around and I'm going to make a little stick out bit to hook my wire in. See how tiny that is? I don't want it to be big, but the wire is going to be really fine. The clay is pretty stiff, and I'm worried that if it was too soft, I would dent the wall or I would poke through. But that's all I want. I thought you might like to see how I lay out a pattern on the top of the rim. I take any metal straight edge and I just gently rub it. And can you see the marks it leaves? It leaves a little black mark on the edge of the rim. And when I'm all done, I'll sponge off these marks. But that is how I lay out a pattern. So the test pieces are out of the bisque and I'm starting to wire them up. So I wanted to show you how I'm gonna do that. First thing I've been doing is tying a loop on the end of each wire, trimming off the excess with a pair of scissors. And I just try to keep light tension on it. Now, since I have four test bottles, I'm going to try some different weaves just for fun. So I'll need to add a little extension here and I'll be done with this one. So I have a knot from where I've extended it. But these little hooks are working really good. I wasn't sure if I was really going to be able to get the wire to snag as well as it does. So that's that's fun. So you can see what I'm doing here. This is the last, last one. I'll hook it on this one. And I'll just carefully tuck it underneath and give it a little wrap. Right there is good enough. Okay, so here's what we have. I've done two different patterns of wrapping the wire, which you've seen. And then on the next two, I did a skip pattern with the same copper wire. And this will be a different experiment. I was looking for really thin copper wire. And the thinnest copper wire I could find is in... Uh, some old telephone, uh, very similar to network cabling, but getting this last little bit of plastic off of the few tiny strands inside was near impossible. So normally I don't like the idea of burning plastic, but in this case, we'll do a white glaze over these two, and we'll get to see what difference, if any, the plastic coating on that wire makes. And then on these two, I'm going to do floating blue and sea foam. So we'll be able to see three different colors, sea foam, floating blue, and uh, white, how this wire comes through. Okay, so here they are glazed. And you can see it really kind of repelled the plastic. I'm not sure if I'm optimistic about this test. So let me go get these in the kiln, we'll fire them, and tomorrow we'll find out what happened. So, here's what happened. We have the plastic wire, which is a fail, and I knew it would be, but clearly the copper wire didn't stay in place, but this one really turned out good. Really straight, very few wiggles. I didn't really run off the foot, uh, which is surprising because I think overall, you'll see on these, these next pieces, that it runs when it has a lot of glaze on it. So one of my takeaways is gonna be, if I do this sort of zigzag, I'm gonna do it a little further up if I'm gonna be using a, a heavy glaze. But I think the tile is fully stuck to it, bummer. But, uh, and these little nibs are sharp, but I'm gonna, I don't think I'm gonna take a stone to them. I think I'm just gonna leave them. But man, I call that a success. Look at how good that pattern is. Really cool. Only in certain spots does it kind of go matte, but I think it looks really good. So, skinny wire, keeping it close to the pot, covering it in glaze. Uh, those are, I think, the takeaways. Skinnier the wire, the better. Hope you enjoyed.